Hello everybody, welcome to the ICSR series, the most demanded and awaited video for all the freshers and experienced people who are looking to improve their knowledge and trying to crack the interviews. I have received numerous requests from so many candidates and I have put in all the efforts to make it as simple as possible and easy to understand the concepts. The ICSR case processing is very important which makes the foundation and also the entry point in the drug safety and pharmacovigilance domain. If you understand and master this process very well, you will be able to advance and shape your career into aggregate reporting and so on. The ICSR case processing provides great potential and immense opportunities for freshers to start their career because most of the big pharmaceutical companies and biotech companies generally outsource this activity as these projects usually require huge resources to deal with large volumes of work. And also many organizations have to deal with the challenges of quality and productivity mainly due to the lack of proper training and concepts being not clear. So, Let's see in detail what is pharmacovigilance, definitions and terminologies used and where do we get the data, how it is collected, documented, processed and then reported to the regulatory authorities. What are the tools and the safety databases used? As many of you already know by now, my main focus is always on the practical aspects rather than just learning some theory part. My intention is to give you tons of information on all my videos. I think that I have covered a lot of important topics on my videos which I feel is more than sufficient for you to ace the interviews. Please watch all my videos till the end to get a proper and thorough understanding and comment if you come across any questions. Also at the end of each video. I have included a small mock interview session where I will be asking you the questions and you can try to answer which will help you practice your flow and improve your speaking skills. One, very, one more very important thing, if you are still in college or pursuing any of the streams in medicine, dentistry, pharmacy, PhD or any other life sciences degree and not sure of practicing and would like to know more about the career path and options in the pharma industry and you are in need of guidance, you can ask your college authorities or the concerned person to contact us by email or send an invite for a session to talk on pharmacovigilance and clinical research and the opportunities in the industry. Of course, the session will be entirely free and I will be happy to see you all and talk about in length about pharmacovigilance and clinical research. I hope you will enjoy all my videos. Welcome to the Medra session. This is a very important topic and every pharmacovigilance professional irrespective of whether they are freshers or experienced they should be aware of this. Medra is used in the ICSR case processing extensively for coding of adverse events. At the end of the video, I have given all the possible interview questions for you to answer along with a very smart and crucial interview tip to ace the interview so do not miss the end. In this video, we will be looking at what is a metra, how it was developed, when are the versions released and its significance, who manages and maintains it. This video is extremely important if you are applying for any drug safety and pharmacovigilance positions and preparing for interviews. We will be looking at what is the vision, history and evolution, background, governance, hierarchy, SMQs and change requests for MEDRA. Reference, I have taken all the content from the Medra website that is www.medra.org. 
Medra at a glance. Let's see what what does Medra stands for. Medra is an extensive medical terminology with a unique architecture and features that support public health monitoring, data analysis, communication, both electronic and traditional, as well as data management. This terminology is hierarchical, multi-axial, multilingual, regularly updated, and strictly maintained. Since it has been in widespread use for more than a decade, it is stable and mature with extensive supporting materials. Let's see what is the vision for Medra. In developing and continuously maintaining Medra, ICH endeavors to provide a single standardized international medical terminology which can be used for regulatory communication and evaluation of data pertaining to medicinal products for human use. As a result, Medra is designed for use in the registration, documentation and safety monitoring of medicinal products through all phases of development cycle, that is from clinical trials to post-marketing surveillance. Furthermore, Medra supports ICH electronic communication within the ICH electronic common technical document that is ECTD and the E2B individual case safety report. Let's see the history and how the Medra was developed. The need for a standardized medical te terminology was identified by the ICH in the 1990s since there was not a standard terminology available that provided the scope and level of granularity needed by regulatory authorities and industry. In the past, the terminologies in use such as COSTART, WHO ART, J ART, H ARTS, ICD-9 and ICD-9-CM were updated so infrequently that individual users created their own version and the standardization was lost. Medra was based on a terminology belonging to the MHRA of the UK and was developed using the ICH process by the ICH partners including WHO. The following significant milestones led to the initial release of Medra. In October 1994, ICH adopted Medra version 1.0 as basis for international terminology. An ICH M1 expert working group was formed to further develop the terminology. In February 1996, version 1.0 was released for alpha testing by pharmaceutical companies and regulatory authorities. In July 1997, ICH agreed to the version 2.0 and renamed the terminology Medra. Please note the spelling M-E-D-D-R-A. There are two Ds in the Medra for Medical Dictionary for Regulatory Activities. In May 1998, ICH Assembly established the ICH Medra Management Committee. In November 1998, Medra Maintenance and Support Services Organization called as MSSO was contracted to maintain and support Medra by IFPMA as a trustee of the ICH. MSSO is commonly asked in the interview, so please note this point. In January 1999, Japanese Maintenance Organization, JMO, was established. In March 1999, initial version of Medra version 2.1 was available from the Medra MSSO and the Japanese version from the JMO. Now the evolution. Medra is an extensive and highly organized terminology that must be maintained with addition of terms as new medical knowledge grows. Under the governance of the ICH Medra Management Committee, the MSSO has developed a strong maintenance process ensuring Medra integrity and that user needs are met. For more complex changes in scope or depth, the committee has supported the convening of advisory expert groups called Blue Ribbon Panels. The following are short descriptions of the main scope expansions and of a range of software tools developed by MSSO to support the use of Medra. 
A bit of background. In the late 1990s, the ICH developed MEDRA, a rich and highly specific standardized medical terminology to facilitate sharing of regulatory information internationally for medical products used by humans. ICH powerful tool MEDRA is available to all for use in the registration, documentation and safety monitoring of medi medical products both before and after a product has been authorized for sale. Products covered by the scope of MEDRA include pharmaceuticals, biologics, vaccines and drug device combination products. Today, it's growing use worldwide by regulatory authorities, pharmaceutical companies, clinical research organizations and healthcare professionals allows better global protection of patient health. How the governance ensures the integrity of MEDRA. ICH has created a governance structure to nurture and protect the integrity of MEDRA. The ICH MEDRA Management Committee has overall responsibility for the direction of MEDRA and oversees all the activities of the ICH MEDRA MSSO, which is tasked to maintain, develop and distribute MEDRA. ICH has also established a Jap Japanese maintenance organization called JMO, which works in close collaboration with the MSSO to support users in Japan. This is how the governance structure looks like. We have management board, under that we have secretariat, under that we have MSSO and below that we have user committee. Under that we have blue ribbon panel, expert panel and SMQ advisory panel and in that we have user group. Also we have Japanese management board under which we have Japanese maintenance organization that is JMO. Let's see the features of MEDRA one by one. The first one is multilingual. In addition to the original English and Japanese translation, MEDRA has been translated and is maintained in many additional languages. MEDRA is available almost more than 15 languages. If you visit the website under the multilingual access section, you can see the list of languages. Each MEDRA term has an associated eight digit numeral code which remains the same irrespective of the language. Multiple languages allow a wide number of users to operate in their native language, which promotes accuracy and precision in assigning codes. The, this interoperability is very powerful and allows easy sharing of data internationally. MEDRA is very affordable and free for government regulators. A MEDRA subscription is available without charge to all regulators worldwide. While paid subscriptions are on a sliding scale linked to the annual turnover of the companies. Academics and healthcare providers can also access MEDRA from MSSO at no cost and from JMO at a nominal cost. The cost for commercial users increases as the subscribers revenue increases. Special licenses are also available, allowing MEDRAs used by smaller commercial users without charge in non-downloadable non format within electronic systems designed to allow companies to meet their regulatory reporting requirements. This allows certain small and micro-sized enterprises to enter data using MEDRA without the need for a MEDRA subscription. MEDRA also provides free training for users. To further facilitate MEDRA implementation and correct use, free training is offered to all subscribers on a wide range of topics and in different formats. We have face-to-face -face training, online sessions, webinars, and recorded video casts. The MSSO staff also offer training in a variety of languages, including English, French, Spanish, German, Korean, Russian and Chinese. The, the JMO staff offers training in the Japanese, Japanese. If you are interested to learn more or want to get trained, you can visit the website and there is an option for free training for all the users. A commonly asked question in the interview is who maintains and manages 
Medra? The answer should be MSSO, Maintenance and Support Services Organization. Under the oversight of the ICH Medra Management Committee, the key function of the MSSO is to maintain, distribute and support Medra on behalf of Medra users. The MSSO staff includes physicians and support personnel that participate in the review of proposed changes submitted by Medra users, highly skilled multilingual, uh, for example, French, German, Medra trainers with industry experience and in-depth knowledge of regulatory requirements, dedicated full-time quality assurance personnel to ensure compliance to the MSSO's ISO 9001 2015 certification, IT staffs to develop and maintain software tools for Medra users, project management to provide oversight and direction. The Medra MSSO staff ensures that daily operational processes and medical reviews of the Medra terminology are performed utilizing the highest quality standards in the industry. The MSSO international team possesses a wide range of background experience in the biopharmaceutical, regulatory and IT industries. The MSSO also has a partnership with the Japanese Maintenance Organization. Let's see in detail what is MEDRA. MEDRA, as you know, the Medical Dictionary for Regulatory Activities is a medical terminology used to classify adverse event information associated with the use of biopharmaceuticals and other medical products, for example, medical devices and vaccines. Coding these data to a standard set of MEDRA terms allows health authorities and the biopharmaceutical industry to more readily exchange and analyze data related to the safe use of medical products. MEDRA is used to classify adverse event data from clinical trials from spontaneous adverse event reports by healthcare professional, patients and others, and from other sources of adverse event data. MEDRA, which was derived by the ICH, is continuously enhanced to meet the evolving needs of its users, who include regulators and industry worldwide. ICH has created a governance structure to nurture and protect the integrity of MEDRA. The ICH MEDRA Management Committee appointed by the ICH Assembly has overall responsibility for the direction of MEDRA and oversees all the activities of the MEDRA MSSO. Very important slides usually asked in the interview, glossary of MEDRA terms. What is SOC? It is system organ class. What is HLGT? It is high level group term. HLT stands for high level term, PT stands for preferred term, LLT stands for the lowest level term and one more SMQ that is standardized MEDRA query. So please remember these terms. It is very commonly asked in the interviews. This is the hierarchy of MEDRA. The at the bottom we have LLT and above that we have preferred terms. Above that we have HLT, high level terms. Above that we have HLGT and above that we have system organ classes. The MEDRA hierarchy explanation in detail. At first, the structure of MEDRA sounds complicated. However, the structure of MEDRA is very logical. There are five levels to the MEDRA hierarchy arranged from very specific to very general. At the most specific level called the lowest level terms, there are more than 80,000 terms which parallel how information is communicated. These LLTs reflect how an observation might be reported in practice. This level directly supports assigning MEDRA terms within a user database. Each member of the next level called preferred terms is a distinct descriptor for a symptom sign, disease diagnosis, therapeutic indication, investigation, surgical or medical procedure, and medical, social or family history characteristic. Each LLT is linked to only one PT. 
each PT has at least one LLT itself as well as synonyms and lexical variants for example abbreviations different word order. The related PTs are grouped together into high level terms called as HLTs based upon anatomy, pathology, physiology, etiology or function. HLTs related to each other by anatomy, pathology, physiology, etiology or function are in turn linked to high level group terms. Finally, HLGTs are grouped into 27 system organ classes called SOC which are grouped by etiology for example infections and infestations, manifestation site for example gastrointestinal disorder or purpose for example surgical and medical procedures. In addition, there is also a SOC to contain issues pertaining to products and one to contain social circumstances. Till 2015, there were only 26 system organ classes. In the recent meeting in Fukuoka, Japan on 6th or 7th June 2015, the ICH Medra Management Committee confirmed the implementation of a 27th SOC in March 2016 for Medra version 19.0, which will be called Product Issues. This new SOC will include terms relevant for issues with product quality, devices, manufacturing quality systems, product quality and distribution, and counterfeit products. This was asked to me in an interview before there were 26 and now it is 27. So when was the 27th SOC added? So please remember this. It was added in March 2016 and the 27th SOC was called as product quality, product issues. Please remember this. So what is standardized Medra queries? Standardized Medra queries called SMQs are tools developed to facilitate retrieval of Medra coded data as a first step in investigating drug safety issues in pharmacovigilance and clinical development. The SMQs are validated, predetermined sets of Medra terms grouped together after extensive review, testing, analysis and expert discussion. SMQs are a unique feature of MEDRA and provide a strong tool to support safety analysis and reporting. The SMQ topics are intended to address the important pharmacovigilance topics needed by regulatory and industry users. The SMQs are maintained with each release of MEDRA by the MSSO. Currently over 100 SMQs have been created. Additional SMQs are created as the need arises. The following are a small sampling of SMQs that are available to users today. That is anaphylactic reaction, central nervous system vascular disorders, convulsions, COVID-19, depression and suicide self-injury, drug abuse, dependence and withdrawal, hyperglycemia or new onset of diabetes mellitus, hypersensitivity, ischemic heart disease, lack of efficacy or effect, medication errors, severe cutaneous adverse reactions. Sometimes asked in the interviews, what are the examples of SMQs or what is the significance of having a SMQ? Here are some examples of use of standardized Medra queries to address some safety issues. Evaluation of the use of algorithmic SMQs in safety signal detection use of MEDRA in characterizing medication errors, use of SMQs in safety evaluation of regulatory submissions, analysis of SMQs for signal detection. So you can just say that use in regulatory submissions, signal detection and evaluation of medication errors. One more feature, a MEDRA change request or CR allows a MEDRA user to recommend the addition of new term or changes to existing terms or improvements in the structure of MEDRA. These changes to MEDRA may help the user code and analyze data 
more accurately. Medra users may request up to 100 CRs per month. Medra users can submit different types of change requests. Simple change requests are processed with each release of Medra and include changes to the LLT and PT levels of Medra. Complex changes are processed once a year and include changes above the PT level at the HLT, HLGT and SOC levels of Medra. Users may also submit change requests related to the standardized Medra queries that is SMQs. Change requests for SMQs include adding PTs to SMQs or making existing PTs in SMQs inactive or requesting a new SMQ. Lastly, users can submit change requests to update the translation of terms in any of the translated versions of Medra. WebCR is an online tool used for submitting CRs to the MSSO. WebCR supports all type of change requests described above. Medra changes, SMQ changes and translation corrections. So sometimes asked in the interview, what is a CR or what is a change request? So user can request for a change or improvement in the existing terms for better data analysis. So overall summary, I will leave it to you. You can write on a piece of paper or you can write it on a Word document what you have understood, how much you will be able to recollect. So starting from the history evolution, what are the features of Medra and what is the hierarchy and what does the MSSO do and what is a change request and SMQ. Now time for interview questions and assess your knowledge and understanding. So tell me what is Medra and its hierarchy? When is Medra updated? What are the versions of Medra? Who updates and maintains Medra? What is a LLT, PT, HLT, HLGT and SOC? Which is the latest version of Medra? What was the latest SOC added in the Medra? What is a SMQ and what is a change request? So I have highlighted this question, which is the latest version of Medra. Whenever you are attending an interview, please make sure that you prepare well and read about Medra. If an interviewer asks you a question about the latest version, please don't say some random versions like 25.3 or 25.7. These numbers do not come. Every year, Medra releases only two versions, one in March and the other one in September. So the version which is released in March will always have the version number as 0 0.0 and the one which is released in September will have 0.1. So for example, 25.0 or 25.1. It is very easy to assess your level of knowledge if you say some 25.3 or 25.9 because they will come to know that you are just guessing. And be smart when you answer. Even if you don't know the version, just say the latest version which you knew or you had come across was either 25.0 or 25.1. Restrict your versions only to 0 0.0 and 0 0.1. This is just an interview tip because I have seen a lot of people, they do all the interview questions well, but when it comes to Medra, they just say some random numbers and it is better to be honest and say that you don't know the version or if you know the latest or the old version, please mention the same. This was in detail about Medra, history, background, evolution, hierarchy. And many of you already know and many of you may not know that I provide trainings on aggregate or periodic reports. These are mainly DSUR, PSUR, PBRER, signal detection and management, RMP, medical literature monitoring or literature surveillance. If you or any of your friends or colleagues are interested, you can visit our website www.globalplacosolutions.com and Navigate into contact us. Under contact us, there is a drop down option as training. 
please select training and you can register. You will receive all the details about our upcoming sessions by email and you can join upon your convenience. I hope that the video was helpful and informative for the freshers and experienced professionals. So I would like to wish you best of luck if you are attending any interviews and thank you very much for watching. Please share with your friends and colleagues.